I mean, when I was growing up, we could face the fact that probably the zoo was interesting for kids up to 12 or 15 years of age, and there wasn't that many other options for them. But today, there's a million options for adults, for young adults, and even for young children, uh, electronic being the primary competition, everything that's out there now. So there's so many things taking up their time, there's so many things taking up parents' time, that we really have to fight for that leisure time option. So I see that as both a poss great possibilities, um, but also a real threat in terms of how do we get people to visit the zoo. Obviously, in terms of social media, it allows us to have an ongoing conversation with our patrons. Um, Facebook being the primary uh, method that we use, we really literally talk to people three times a day. For those really serious Facebook users who are on all the time, it's a running conversation about everything that's out there. Uh, the challenge is you can't control social media, you can only try to steer it, and when they're not happy with us, they let us know. But that's also a huge benefit, because we find out right away. Um, and we also find what's amazing is because it's a community, uh, people come to our rescue or aid if they're ever concerned, but more than that, they also constantly share how to use the zoo. So it gives people more reasons to visit when we have a baby animal born, when we have a new program, just someone's uh, suggestion on a way to enjoy the zoo. Now, we also took a look at, out, out there, you know, basically our zoo in particular already has sort of a recreational aspect to it. We have uh, kayaking in the zoo, we have paddle boats. Um, and this year, uh, when we looked out and said, you know, we're really losing kids that are eight or nine years old, we were able to go and add a bunch of uh, zipline courses that are a treetop challenge, they all take place in the tree, they go tree to tree, they include zip lines, but lots of other challenges. And the biggest course is like a three hour experience. So in essence, it's a whole new attraction we've opened up. And what's been really excited about it, it opened in July, it's only open three months, we've hit or surpassed our projection every month. It's been profitable on its own, but we actually feel it's brought excitement back to the zoo. Zoo attendance is up, and we feel it's continued, it's repositioned us as really relevant. So. Chances are most people don't do both things in the same day. It's a long day. But we're finding some people who now come two days, so we become a two-day attraction, so to speak. Um, and what was most interesting is it got us to re-examine our whole brand. And so here we have people going on the trees, and part of the ex experience, there they are seeing animals. In other parts, they're not. But the whole thing is tree to tree. It's over a beautiful, uh, beautiful wetland. They're hugging trees a lot, just sometimes holding on for dear life. Mm -hmm. um, but they're out in the forest, and, and we use this opportunity to have conversations with frontline staff about a mission-based process we're going through. And, and we asked, how does Treetop Trek fit our mission? And what everybody said is it absolutely fit our mission. It's absolutely essential to us. It's helping us redefine our mission. So we're not just providing incredible, intimate, personal connections with animals. We're really providing incredible, intimate, personal connections with nature. It helped refocus us. Um, so sort of bringing in these other activities to stay relevant has helped us redefine who we are in a better way. And our frontline staff has been in the middle of that conversation.